Hi everyone, it's Daisy and our project today is Elsa, a portrait of Elsa. It comes from a request and I hope that this is what they were hoping to get from it. Um, I've done the drawing but at the same time the markers that I used are Copic range of markers simply because skin tones are really good with them and you definitely want to have a set of good grays to work with her because she's got such light hair. So stay with me, hope you enjoy. Our starting point is the curve for the eyes and I set those in, I set in my distance between the right eye and the left eye. From there, I'll bring around the rest of the eye shape and check to see if I like what I've got. So that generally is my starting point versus doing traditional style, making a T, creating the outer frame and then fitting everything in. I like to approach faces a bit more this way. It gives me more control. Now, once I get the eyes done, then I'll move to the other parts of the face. The shape of the eyes is critical, especially if you're drawing somebody like uh, Elsa that is so well known to people that you can't really wing it. You can't really just say it kind of looks like her because you'll end up walking away unsatisfied. So I really suggest you draw the outline of the eyes, put that sheet of paper away from you, step back and just analyze. Do you like it? A lot of times I like to look from my source to my drawing and back and forth and back and forth. And that kind of makes me realize where I'm standing and I'm able to rectify it. Moving on into the eyebrows at this point, and I watch for the negative spaces. So I watch for the distance from the um, inner corner of the eye to the outer corner, because when you shape eyebrows, they tend to follow the shape of the eye, that is true. But at the same time, the gap between the eye and the eyebrow changes a lot. Pay attention to those things, it'll help you draw. Coming to her nose, I wanna see the placement. When I look at her portrait, it feels like the nose, the tip of her nose is quite close range to the eyes. I'll put it down one time, but I feel like not a really, take it off and then just drop it a bit more and again i generally like to step away from my pictures when i draw and i'm making these videos it helps me to see my image in my computer because my camera is capturing it that distances it and so i'm able to decide that yes i like it and i'll then move on to my mouth now when I draw the mouth, I don't draw the upper portion of the lip or the lower. I like drawing the center of the mouth. It helps me to capture in the shape of the entire mouth. And then I add in the upper lip line and the lower lip line. I'm now returning to my eyes and I'm going to add in the irises. I pay attention to negative space again to make sure that the size of the iris and what's left of the white portion of her eyes is as it seems on the main pictures for Elsa. I like what I'm seeing, so I'm going to proceed to creating the outside of her face now. And I always keep an eye on, again, negative space is vital in my drawings. I watch for it, I apply it step by step, and in piecemeal. It's never one line that I just pull from top to bottom because I want the cheekbones in, and I want to get the proximity of the 
side of her eye and all the rest of it. So yeah, there's a lot, in my opinion, that needs to be captured. And I take my time on it. Again, that distance factor is critical, especially if you're trying to improve your skills on the drawing of people or anything else that you want to improve on. You have to step away from your art, look at it from a distance and ask yourself, do you like it or not? Moving to the neck, and from there, the hairline above her eyes. I go piecemeal again. My way to draw, especially if I'm drawing something I've never drawn before, is that I take my time on it. I study my sizes, and I study the um, turn of the line, whether I need it more curved, less curved, more straighter, less straighter, all of these things impact the drawing itself. And especially when I come to creating hair, I like to study the strands, the major breaks in the different strands that the character has. And I'll put those in before I put the finer lines in. And again, with Elsa's hair, her hair is so light that I don't really care to draw too many lines into her hair because that would take away. You definitely want those gray markers for her hair because she doesn't have any color, quite honestly. It is white. The way that they show the color to it is with gray markers or gray color rather. So you want those handy and then you can put it in. So when you see me draw the hair as I am doing right now, you'll notice that it's major lines. It's not like a lot of uh, intermittent lines just to show the flow of the hair or anything. I'm just breaking it into major spaces. Again, as I move forward with the rest of it, her dress, and this is the one from the second movie of Frozen, the last scene shows her in a white gown and the top part of the white gown is so sheer and it's so soft against her skin that I don't draw it. Instead, I use the skin tone marker that I got from uh, the Copic range and I use that one to create the outlines of the net or the mesh uh, style that she's got against her chest. So it's never a line. I don't use my pencil for everything, especially not for a subject that has such soft contours as this one does. So that's another food for thought. Think about where you do use your pencil and where you don't. If the subject that you are drawing has a very soft kind of an appeal and a look, you want to minimize how much carbon you put on that paper. You can also do this, you can draw everything out and erase it all, but not very aggressively. That way you'll be left with a ghost print of your original drawing, but the carbon, the stronger tones of it will be gone to where when you use your markers, you'll be able to work over everything. I've done the coloring portion of this in time-lapse so that you can watch it in a faster flow of things. Again, I'll try to put uh, the shades that I've used for this particular project down below so that you can reference them if you want to use them. I hope you've enjoyed this video and send me your requests. I'll be happy to make videos for you going forward.